All right, today's lesson is gonna be about evaluating multiple functions from a graph. So if you've seen my previous video, we discussed evaluating uh, inputs from a graph. Now we're gonna be evaluating multiple um, inputs, okay, from a graph. So let's go ahead and take a look here at number one. Number one, we're, we have to evaluate the F function, which is the blue line at positive three. And we're gonna evaluate the, the G function, which is the, the purple or um, purple-ish color <laughs> at negative one. All right, so let's go ahead and remember all of these we're gonna be um, referring to our X axis, okay? So for negative, for F of three, we wanna find three and let's get a, let's get another color here. All right, so here's three right here. And I need to go down to the graph for the F function. So we're gonna go down to right here. And then we're gonna go over to the left to see what that Y value is. That would be, this is negative one. So that's gonna be negative two, negative three. So negative two. So F of three is equal to negative two. <clears throat> now we need to find g of negative 1. So g of negative 1. Well, negative 1 on the x-axis is right here. And we're going to have to go up to the g function, which it meets at positive 6. So g of negative 1 is positive 6. <clears throat> now that we've done that, we still have to evaluate this expression here. So looking at all of this, uh, let me highlight it for us. As a matter of fact, we'll do it in green. This entire thing here, oops. We need to evaluate that. That's gonna say negative six times negative two minus six times positive six. Now, now that we know what that is, we just need to evaluate it. A negative times a negative is a positive, so that's 12 times, I mean that's six times two is 12, minus a positive times a positive, which is a positive, so that's gonna be minus 36. And then when we finish evaluating that, we end up subtracting and we're gonna get a negative 24 for our final answer. So going back here, if I was typing this into a computer, we would type in the answer of negative 24. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at number two. For number two, we need to evaluate the F function at negative eight. So on our X axis, here's negative eight, and we, we want to go to the F function, which is the blue line. So we go down till it meets. And where does that meet at over here? This would be negative one, this would be negative two. So when F, uh, when, ne when the function F is negative eight, Y is gonna be negative two. And now we need to do the G function, which is the purple looking line at positive two. So here's positive two on the X axis and we need to go down to the purple line, which is the G function, and then go over to the left. So that answer there is negative four. Now we can evaluate this whole thing here. So doing that, that's gonna give us negative three times negative two plus seven times negative four a negative times a negative is a positive that's positive six plus a positive times a negative is a negative and that's going to be negative 28 <clears throat> lastly we go ahead and add or well, excuse me subtract because the signs are different and that's going to give us a answer of negative 22 so when we evaluate both of these functions our final answer is negative 22 and let's take a look at the last one, number three. 
Once again, we're evaluating function f at positive 7. So here's positive 7 between 6 and 8. We go down to the f function, and then we're going to have to go over, and what number is that? That would be negative 1. So when x is positive 7, the function f is negative 1. And we need to do g of negative 1. So, <clears throat> and I forgot to highlight my x-axis because we're still referring to the x-axis. Negative 1 on the x-axis is right here. And going up to that graph, we will stop right there, which is at positive 1. So now that we know what g, g of negative 1 is, which is positive 1, we can go ahead and evaluate this entire thing here. That's going to be 10 times negative 1 plus 9 times positive 1. A positive times a negative is a negative, so that's negative 10 plus 9. And negative 10 plus 9, we have to subtract to keep the sign of the larger number, which makes this final answer negative 1. And that will conclude our lesson for today.